Welcome to the Church Leaders Podcast, conversations with today's top ministry leaders to help you lead better every day. And now podcasting from scenic Colorado Springs, Colorado, here's your host, Jason Day. Welcome, friends, to the Church Leaders Podcast. I'm your host, Jason Day, and I'm excited to introduce you to this week's guest, Dr. Les Parrott. Les and his wife, Leslie, have committed themselves to helping others build healthy relationships and strong marriages. Over their years in ministry, they've been featured on CNN, The Today Show, Oprah, The View, USA Today, and the list just goes on and on. They speak in over 40 cities each year, addressing a variety of audiences from churches and ministry leaders to Fortune 500 boards. They're number one New York Times bestselling authors and are equipping local churches to make a positive impact on marriages and families. On this week's episode, Les and I discuss how pastors and ministry leaders can effectively address the issues of brokenness in marriage and help change the statistics when it comes to divorce. Les shares an incredibly practical tool that's making a tremendous kingdom difference in so many marriages. We talk about how your church, no matter the size or location, can begin using this resource immediately in ministry, including how it can help you reach new couples who do not have a church home. This can be a game changer for your church and your community. So please join me in my conversation with Dr. Les Parrott. Les, welcome to the Church Leaders Podcast. Thank you for making the time to be with us. Hey, it's great to be with you. It's, in fact, an honor. I really appreciate it. Awesome, brother. Now, I understand that you just had a new book release. And so before we dive into our conversation, can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I know we're going to talk about marriage ministry and and this new tool that uh, I think is pretty revolutionary, but... uh, I appreciate you asking this brand new book. It literally just came out. Uh, I'm holding it in my hand. It's called Love Like That. And uh, that comes from a a verse in Ephesians where Paul is describing how Jesus loved. And uh, he closes that out by this three-word little sentence in the New Testament, love like that. And uh, that struck me. And it's just like, really? I'm supposed to love like that? (laughs) Um, and love like Jesus, the bar seems so high. It seems so unattainable. I fail so miserably at it, and yet I do want to do that. And not only that, Jesus commands us to do that. So does Paul. And so I've really been on a lifelong quest, truly, for the last 20 plus years to try and understand this as a psychologist, as a minister. How in the world do you love like Jesus in your daily life? with people on the home front, at work, and even total strangers. And so this book, the subtitle is Five Relationship Secrets from Jesus. And uh, it is, I kind of look at the life of Christ, and I went to Israel. I had maps all over my study. I, I was really, you know, I, I really got into this. And it's different than anything I've ever written before, because most of my writing is on marriage and, and family relationships and and, um, you know, dating and love and those kinds of things, romantic love. This is special to me. This is really the hub of the wheel because it doesn't matter whether you have communication techniques and conflict resolution skills and all the rest. If you, if you don't get this one right, how to love like Jesus, the rest are pretty difficult mm. because the bottom line is we only do this through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And so, in fact, I, I finished the book. I, I looked at these five kind of skills, and, and, and not skills, but five means to love like Jesus after looking at his teaching and his life. And just to give you an example, the first one is mindful. If you want to love like Jesus, you've got to be mindful. In other words, you've got to set your own agenda aside temporarily and see what other people don't see. And so many examples, a classic is Zacchaeus and, and others, but, but Jesus was able to do this. And so each chapter is something like that, sometimes counterintuitive. And if you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds <laughs> so awesome, brother. I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> so that's the end of the podcast. Yeah, there you go. Yes, tune in next time. <laughs> awesome, brother. No, um, I, 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 love will it. Min- I will just mention that if, if uh, our listeners are, are interested, go to lovelikethatbook.com. Lovelikethatbook.com. We have everything you need for sermon series and small groups and, and video and, and workbooks and, and all the rest. Oh, I love that, brother. What a great resource. Thank you for uh, for sharing that with us. We'll have to definitely go check that out, my friend. Good stuff. Thanks. Now, Les, um, it's no secret that just because a couple 
is, you know, regularly attending a church, it doesn't mean that they are somehow immune to divorce, right? And as pastors and ministry leaders, one of the, the most heartbreaking things that we have to walk some of our people through is the fallout, um, the pain, the hurt that they've experienced because of a divorce. And, and I know that as a pastor myself and talking with other pastors around the country, that sometimes we have people who hide their issues well, and for whatever reason, they don't seek help in their marriage. And over the years, I've had some couples come to me early on and share they're having issues, but I honestly have been surprised by some couples uh, with whom I felt I had a really good relationship who seem to suddenly pop in and inform me that they've, you know, already filed for divorce. So they're already that far down the road. Yeah. Les, uh, what, what have you learned in all your years of, of working with, with couples, healthy marriages, working with pastors and churches? And why is it that some people keep their marital issues from their pastors? Well, it's the same reason that pastors keep them from other people Mm. because it's shameful, right? Right. We feel, we feel like we have failed at one of the greatest commitments that we've made in our lives. And, and so it's, we keep thinking something surely will happen and turn this around. And, and I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to put my dirty laundry out there in front of my pastor who I want uh, his respect. And so, so we, we keep it, we keep it uh, secretive. And that's why we, are always stunned when it's like, what? How right. could they be breaking up? I thought they had a great marriage. You know, they never let on, you know? So, but, but that's really, you know, this whole idea um, of, you know what a BHAG is, right? A big, hairy, audacious goal. Right. Our BHAG in our ministry for many years now has been to uh, see the divorce rate lowered in churches by a third mm. in our lifetime. Now, can you imagine... Uh, that what happened, every single percentage point that we drop the divorce rate, the lives of more than a million children are positively impacted. Wow. Think about that. Yeah. That's for one single percentage point. This, this impacts generations. And so what if we got that to double digits? You know, that, that, that's what drives us. It would be one of the greatest social revolutions that the church has ever seen. And here's the good news. We have the tools to make that happen. We know more about what it takes to build healthy marriages in churches than we've ever known before. And that's why I'm excited to get to talk to you about this, this tool we're going to uh, talk about here in just a moment. But that divorce rate and the pain that you're describing, that every pastor knows, it's like, wow, they were on our church board. And, and how, where did this, this is like, just like a, like a, a bomb that went off. Somebody mm. threw a grenade into the, into the board meeting because we had no idea this was going on. That pain that every pastor can identify with, we've just got to do, we've got to get serious about it. And, you know, years ago, I would get so frustrated with pastors that would consider pre-marriage counseling, uh, just talking about the ceremony. And that used to be more (laughs) common, I think, than it is today, you know, and because we, we didn't know how to do that. We didn't, you know, we didn't take classes in seminary and uh, about that pre-marriage counseling. And yet, that's the work of a pastor. It's one of one of the things that uh, we're called to. And so, uh, I am just, I'm just so passionate about this BHAG because it would impact so many lives, so many local churches in such a positive way, and we really would become that uh, that light to the world. Yeah, you know, it's fascinating, Les, as as you talk through that. Because I can think there there are so many so many different issues that we as pastors or as churches, you know, we see that you know the, these issues in the world, and so we begin to you know pour energy and time and resources into you know tackling this particular injustice or another, and 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 they're all all important. But it's fascinating to think that this idea of healthy marriages has such a, an impact, and I think we know that you know like like we understand that. But are we really investing the time and the energy and the resources to do all that we can as pastors, as ministry leaders, to help really create those environments where marriages grow and are stronger and making that an emphasis? How have you seen over, over the course of your ministry and the work that you and Leslie have done, how have you seen churches, you know, are, are they focusing in more or less on marriages? Have you seen any sort of trends as far as how pastors are approaching marriage? 
Well, it's different from church to church. And, and by the way, I can speak with uh, some decent authority on this because mm-hmm. we did a, a listening tour about five years ago uh, with churches. And we, we just set out to, to do this with about 50 churches, and especially on the pre-marriage front, just to ask two questions. What are you doing when it comes to pre-marriage ministry, and what can help you do that better? And uh, after we got through 50 churches, we just we just kept going. We couldn't stop. We did 300 churches wow. of various sizes throughout uh, North America. And what we learned is churches are just all over the board on this thing. And it's it's a little disconcerting. Some churches, you know, are just fantastic. They got it nailed down. They got a great model. And in other churches, you can just tell there's a lack of leadership and somebody is afraid to do anything because uh, Uncle Joe devised this uh, little booklet that we've used for the last, uh, you know, 18 years, and we don't want to step on his toes. And, you know, there's just a hodgepodge of things. And, and other churches are like, hey, if two people are in love and, and they love God, the Holy Spirit will work it out for them. And, and it's like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> you know? So, um in fact, uh, some years ago, Leslie and I were invited by the governor of Oklahoma to move to Oklahoma for a year from our home city of Seattle, and we did that and became what he called his marriage ambassadors. Why? Why Oklahoma? Because they have the highest divorce rate in the country, wow. and right there in the buckle of the Bible Belt. And so uh, we moved there to work on uh, this marriage initiative, a $10 million marriage initiative, to help reduce the divorce rate. And a lot of our emphasis, of course, was in churches as well as colleges and and community groups. But uh, what we discovered was that mentality of of a lot of times where pastors just felt like, hey, as long as they're in love and they love God, everything will work out. And that's a big service, you know? Mm -hmm. Couples need skills. Right. And they need insight. They need awareness. And like I said, we know what can help a couple enjoy lifelong love. And that's why I just feel compelled to help pastors put these tools in their hands and help them do it well. Yeah, and it's it's interesting because um, you and Leslie, through your work, you kind of discovered and uncovered specific topics which need to be addressed early on to really help launch a healthy marriage. What what are some of these topics that you guys um, found were very, very instrumental in how uh, a husband and wife would relate to each other in marriage? Well, here's what we know uh, before I give you those topics. Yeah. You can uh, almost guarantee you can lower a couple's chances of divorce by 31% by doing something very simple. And that is bringing these topics that we're about to get into to the forefront with them. And uh, if you spend uh, at least um, a minimum of six hours, five to six hours going through this with them, whether it's in a small group, a large class, or one-on-one, we know from research that their chances of divorce drop by 31% at least. And not only that, their level of contentment and satisfaction and happiness increases by at least 30%. Wow. Two good things we want, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what is that? Well, Leslie and I, years ago, we wrote this book, Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. And the very first line, by the way, of that book says, we never had pre-marriage counseling, but we spent the first year of our marriage in therapy. <laughs> and that's the truth. And, uh, and, and by the way, both of our fathers, pastors, and it was just like, really? <laughs> we didn't have any pre-marriage counseling. So anyway, uh, we, we wrote this book, and uh, lo and behold, it just, it just took off. I mean, we were on every show you can imagine, from Oprah to Barbara Walters and Tom Brokaw and, and all the rest. And, uh, and when that book reached a million copies, more than a million couples had uh, used it, uh, our publisher, Zondervan, said, hey, we better keep this thing up to date and, and, uh, and update it, you know, and, and that's, uh, usually publisher speak for let's put a new cover on it. <laughs> and, uh, we said, no, let's do it right. And that's when we did that, that listening tour I referred to, to find out really what's going on out there. And are these the topics that really matter and so forth. And so it's all the usual suspects. It's no big surprise. Our listeners won't be surprised. It's, you know, it's communication, it's conflict management. It's, uh, 
understanding uh, love and how it changes over the lifespan. It's uh, spiritual intimacy, how do two believers walk together with God in a way that's meaningful to both of them, so they're not just going through the motions, but it's authentic. It's, it's those issues. But what we've done here recently is take it to a whole new level by taking these topics that we know matter most and personalizing them by giving them a customized roadmap for lifelong love through a tool that we call the SYMBIS assessment, S-Y-M-B-I-S. That stands for saving your marriage before it starts. And the SYMBIS assessment has been in the works for a long, long time. In fact, uh, I'm sure that uh, everybody listening to us has heard of eHarmony, right? The online matching company. Uh, What they may not know is that Neil Warren, the founder of that company, a passionate believer, and when he first thought of that, Leslie and I were at the kitchen table in his home in Los Angeles, and he said, hey, I wonder if we could use this new internet thing to match couples to have more successful marriages and to lower the divorce rate, And because we shared that, that BHAG. And so that turned into a long conversation that night. And, uh, and then obviously evolved into uh, this company that pretty much everybody knows. And so Leslie and I were with eHarmony for the first 10 years, helping that team build out that algorithm and, and all the rest. And in the context of that, I said to Neil, I said, if this ever goes, I want to do the same thing for couples that are already matched, couples that are already engaged to be married and leverage technology in a way that we never have before because we didn't have the capacity to help them carve out that path. And so that's really what we've done with save, with the Symbus assessment. And we've now had literally hundreds of thousands of couples go through this since we launched this five years ago. And it is just, it's just thrilling. I, Leslie jokes with me, it's like every day is Christmas because I, I love <laughs> getting up and uh, walking into my study and looking at the emails that have come in in the last 24 hours from couples and from pastors that are using the Symbus assessment. It's just a joy. That's awesome. That, I love that. Now, talk to us a little bit less. What really is this Symbus assessment? Like, w- yeah. w- what is it? Yeah, so the concept is super simple. Uh, three things. Number one, you get trained and certified in uh, using the assessment. So as a pastor, it's going to take you about three hours online to go through that training. And you do that, you don't have to fly someplace, you don't have to drive downtown, you just you can do it at home in your PJs if you want to. <laughs> you can do it all in one day, or you can do it over the course of a few days. In fact, I had a pastor tell me recently he did it on his iPad while he was shaving every morning, and it took him two weeks to go through the training <laughs> uh, while he was shaving. But you get trained and certified, and then number two, you invite uh, a couple to take the assessment, and you do that through your dashboard that, that comes with, you know, after your training, you get access to this really cool dashboard. And you can even put your church logo on it uh, when they, they get the invite. And then uh, they answer these a series of 300 items. It takes them about 30 minutes to do that. And that generates a 15-page report that comes to you as their pastor. So you're always in the driver's seat. It doesn't go to them. It comes to you. And then you simply unpack that report with them. And you can do that over the course of, uh, uh, you know, five or six sessions. Uh, You can do that uh, through a small group. You can do that in an intensive retreat kind of uh, one day thing. Uh, It's really up to you. It's it's designed to be flexible and work with the way that you work uh, on this. I know that uh, take, take uh, Craig Rochelle's church. um, They're, they're power users when it comes to the Symbus assessment and uh, they, uh, Life Church, we're talking about, of course, mm-hmm. and they have every single one of their staff members trained in Symbus. And they all use it differently. They all use different schedules with the couples that they work with, but they're all basically working from the same palette uh, because they have every couple that gets married go through the Symbus assessment. And then you take a church like, uh, oh, I'm thinking of 12 Stone in Atlanta mm-hmm. or Church of the Highlands in Birmingham. And they have a class every quarter that couples go through, and they all go through Symbus that way. So the structure of it is really up to you and your setting. Um, But the idea is that you're giving these couples what we know truly moves the needle in a positive direction for lifelong love. 
And so you unpack that report with them and we can talk a little bit about the substance of that report because it's super cool. But, uh, but that's, the, that's the general idea. Does that make sense? You get trained and certified, invite a couple, and then debrief the report with them. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so this is just kind of putting all of those tools right into a pastor or ministry leader's hands at the local church level where they have a full-on you know, premarital counseling and preparation ministry that just kind of instantaneously can happen once they become a facilitator? Is that what we're saying? exactly right. And by the way, before I forget, let me mention this. Pre-marriage ministry is one of the great untapped portals for evangelism in the church today. Mm. Because one of the things that we do through Symbus, if you want to, uh, as a church, is you can get referrals. And we have thousands of couples all over North America that are looking for a Symbus facilitator. So they come to our website and they punch in their zip code to find what churches in their community are Symbus certified. And so we're sending couples all the time to churches they might not otherwise ever come to because these, these couples um, are looking to, you know, they've read the book and they've learned about the assessment and they want somebody to go through that with them. I love They're that. highly motivated. Yeah, yeah, that and, is and, so good. You know, yeah, so it's super fun that way. And so anyway, when, when a, a church uh, does this, and it doesn't matter whether you marry, you know, one or two couples a year or you're marrying dozens of couples a year, Symbus is designed to, to fit into to your cadence of uh, however you do that. And you don't have to be a, a, a PhD. You don't have to be a psychologist or a professional counselor. It's designed for pastors to be able to use this or even lay couples, what we call marriage mentors. Mm. Um, and uh, we have over a quarter million marriage mentors wow. in our system. And it's, it's just fun because the tide rises for everybody when they do that. Right, but but that's the concept. Awesome, so. Le- Les. Let me ask you this, because um, you mentioned Life Church, um, Church of the Highlands. You know, obviously those are large ministries. Um, is this something yeah. that's accessible to a church, no matter no matter what size? Oh yeah, we have thousands of churches that um, you know are, are less than a couple hundred people, and the pastor knows, hey, I want to I want to give world class uh, education to the couples in my care. And by the way, we now have made it so that the Symbus assessment can be used with couples at any age or stage, not just pre-marriage. And so anytime a pastor is doing some kind of marriage work with a couple, uh, he can use the Symbus assessment and, and, and have that kind of insight into them. Let me give you one example yeah. of how powerful this tool can be for a pastor. There's two pages in the, report, in the 15-page report that are dedicated to uh, the two personalities. And as we like to say to every couple, there's never been a marriage like yours before, and there never will be again. Why? Because you have this multifaceted personality, and so does your partner. And when you combine the chemistry between the two of you, you know, it, you've created something that doesn't exist. And, and that's why certain things work for you and not for other couples. Of course, we have universal biblical principles that work for everybody, but then we have these little individualistic kind of perspectives on, on how this marriage can work as well. And so when we get into personality in the assessment, it gives you this, this pinwheel of, of kind of eight different spouse types, like the pioneering spouse and, and so forth. And what you might think is, oh, okay, so you get a paragraph describing your type, and you do, but most people think, oh, you're getting one of eight paragraphs there. You know, I'm a pioneering spouse or I'm a, a deliberating spouse or a, an affirming spouse, whatever it is. And so you get that paragraph. And that's not the case. In fact, the paragraph that you get describing your personality on the Symbus assessment is uh, unique to you. You won't see it on anyone else's report because we have nearly 30,000 variables that go into that paragraph. Wow. That means, and, and if anybody's listening to us that has any concept of coding, they, their mind just, like, the back of their <laughs> head just blew off because uh, it, it's, it's incredibly sophisticated. And you don't need to know anything about that because the cookies are on the bottom shelf. It puts it out there in the, in the report for you. And then the cool thing is we look at their two, this is the DNA of their personalities, how God made them. And we bring those together in another descriptive paragraph that looks at what happens when these two unique people get together. What are the strengths that they have? 
Uh, how does it influence their decision making? How does it influence uh, problem solving and, and conflict resolution and their, their talk types? Uh, all these kinds of things unfold when you can get into the unique hardwiring of how God made these two people that he's joined together. And that's pretty exciting, right? Yeah. In, in fact, the uh, Couples will think, you know, man, I didn't know my pastor was so smart. <laughs> How did he figure this out? So, but that, that's part of the magic of the Simbus assessment. That's really cool. Now, Les, tell me a little more. You mentioned that this obviously originated kind of as a premarital preparation type thing, but you said that it can actually be used by people no matter where they find themselves. Um, you know, people have been married for years or whatever it might be. How are some ways that pastors are are using this tool beyond just the premarital which we definitely see the value in that but you know what what are some examples of, of ways that pastors are using it beyond that yeah well it was funny because when we first launched uh we would have sometimes an email or a call from a pastor and kind of sheepishly say hey i love this thing i feel like in fact uh, more than once a pastor has said it, it's like if steve jobs was designing premarital instrument, it would look like this. I, I feel like I moved from a rotary dial phone to a smartphone suddenly <laughs> in my marriage ministry. And and they would kind of sheepishly say, uh, I've started using this with couples that aren't just engaged, but even married for 20 years. Is that is that wrong? <laughs> <laughs> and I'd have to kind of confess, hey, I'm doing the same thing in my own practice. And so we got to a point here about a year and a half ago where we call it Symbus Plus. And so from your dashboard, when you invite a couple to take the assessment, it knows as soon as they start answering the first couple of questions, if they're married, it goes, okay, this couple needs a different block of questions here. And so the report is very similar to the pre-marriage one, but it has some differences uh, that you would predict. Obviously in pre-marriage, uh, you know, we have a question about premarital sex and physical intimacy. Well, that doesn't need to be there for a married couple. Right. And so that changed. Those kinds of things changed. But then we also added two more pages to the Symbus Plus uh, report. And one of them has to do with time. Because, first of all, engaged and dating couples, they don't struggle with time, right? They're not like, man, we just can't get enough time together because <laughs> uh, they're spending all their time <laughs> right, together. Right. And then they get married. And then before you know it, some little ones come along and, and it's like, man, we just uh, all, we just keep giving each other our leftover time on our schedule. We don't get any quality time together. And so anyway, we have a page on that to figure out your, 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 how you're hardwired for time because most people don't realize that how you experience time is different than how your spouse does. And we miss out on moments together when we don't get that. So this is designed to reclaim those moments. So that's one difference. And then another is what we, we call, the page is called Harmony. And it looks at 15 really important things in marriage, like in-law relationships or anger issues or spiritual intimacy or what have you. And shows you how content each person is. And then it customizes the order so that the things that they're most content to are at the top of the list and the places where they can leverage the most growth are at the bottom of the list, and they can visually see these with some bar graphs. And it's super cool. In fact, that's some pastors have just said, just to have that for a couple, it mm. lets me know what, what I need to be focused on with this couple that's been married 38 years or 12 years or you know however long it's been. And so that's kind of how they're using it in that context. And it's, it's been fun because what you're able to do is give a pastor – a tool that makes them exponentially more effective, like overnight right. uh, when it comes to ministering to a couple, whereas they couldn't do that bef yesterday, but now they can do that after this, this, just a brief investment of training. And so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I love that. I mean, that, that's what I love about this less so much is that you've taken something that's been somewhat inaccessible to every pastor and you've Yep. You've made it in such a way that it is very accessible to every pastor. And it's one of these tools that, um, and, and I love things like this, where it gives the local church the opportunity to be so much more effective in ministry and more efficient, yep. you know, because if you think about it, for a pastor to be able to go through and develop an assessment on their own, and learn as much as they need to learn to be able to pull this off on their own, you know, it would take them forever. 
Whereas now right. you've made this tool, you've taken all of your learnings and, and, and you've distilled it all down. You've made it an easily accessible tool so that now pastors can be more efficient and more effective to help more couples um, than they ever could have dreamt at a deeper level. And that's what's so cool about this, that it's just this tool that is equipping local churches to make an impact. And like you said, to reduce divorce rate to help people have more fulfilling, you know, and higher contentment levels within their marriages. It's just absolutely, yeah. absolutely awesome. Well, I appreciate that. Some pastors, I was speaking to a group of pastors in Oregon a little while ago, and, and they said, why didn't you develop this years ago? We, <laughs> we just launched this about five years ago. And they said, why didn't you do this years ago? And I said, uh, I wish I would have, but this is the kind of thing that you can only do after you've been traveling in this lane for a long time to really understand right. um, what needs to be done. How do we know this really works? And then secondly, to have the technology. I mean, we're in a new day and that's why this, this technology is so, you know, it, it, we, we can use it to our advantage in this way. I had a, a pastor, another nice compliment. He said, uh, I just had a bunch of marriage mentors in our church, like a half dozen marriage mentors. And we went through this training and we have this other curriculum on marriage mentoring. And they did that. And he said, um, and then we're, we're going to use this other assessment uh, tool that uh, I made up and it's kind of a questionnaire and so forth to just kind of understand the couple. And he said, I, I realized that basically we were driving around in a, a bunch of uh, Oldsmobiles, like from our grandfather's generation, and you came along with a brand new Tesla for everybody. <laughs> and uh, he said, we want to drive Teslas in our church, which was a nice little compliment. That's but it is fun to be able to see that. It's, it's, it's super rewarding. And by the way, I'm sure some of our listeners are going, okay, so how do I learn more about this thing? Yeah. Um, and if they go to Symbus.com, S-Y-M-B-I-S, Symbus.com, they can literally watch a 20-minute uh, uh, demo by me where I walk through page by page the report and how the whole thing works and how your dashboard can work and and all that kind of thing. So Symbus.com. Awesome. So Symbus.com, that's where they can go and, and uh, learn more, see that demo. Is that also, uh, I understand, that's where they can go to actually go through the training to become a, a facilitator? Same place? Yeah, they can they can learn more about it there or they can actually begin their training and, and by the way, the, the training, one of the things that we wanted to do was make this super accessible. We didn't want finances to be a, an issue for people. And so the training is, it's a one-time fee. You don't get re-upped every year or mm. anything like that. It's just a one-time training fee of $200 on the front end. And if you move to another church or another state or whatever, and you take your dashboard, you know, follows you because it's, it's, it's connected to you. And so um, that is there. And then uh, each time you use it with a couple, there's a minimal fee that either you wrap into the fee that you're charging these, these couples in your pre-marriage uh, work, or you can uh, actually have the couple pay it directly, or you can buy codes and get it a, a discount. Uh, we've really tried to think through how do we make this as easy as possible for pastors to use and, and lower the, the, the speed bumps for them. And by the way, there's, there's curriculum, there's, there's free Bible studies, there's free videos that you can use in your session. There's uh, one of the, one of the questions that we get time and again is what do I do about cohabiting couples, these mm. couples that are living together? It's just, you know, and, and so there's, there's basically three models that we see of churches, how they handle cohabitation. And so we have a Symbus guide in your dashboard in a resource section that shows you here's how. Uh, it's usually done in one of these three ways, and it's kind of on a continuum. And, and what if it's my first wedding? We have a guide on that. Or what if you feel like this couple really shouldn't be getting married? Is there something I should be looking for in the report? Yeah, there's five indicators. And so all these different things, devotionals, you name it, we have. Uh, in fact, I, whenever I'm talking to a group of pastors, I say, if you can think of a resource that we haven't designed to help you do this better, I will uh, take you to a steak dinner because I think we've exhausted it. <laughs> we've got everything you need right here. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. And 
Les, just thank you so much for taking the time to be with us and to share and for distilling all these things that you guys have been running around the country for a couple decades, you know, <laughs> learning and, and digging into, and you're making it so that we can actually uh, use it. And uh, we so appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, you're welcome. And, and let me just say directly to our, our pastors that are out there listening, thank you for the work that you guys are doing. You're in the trenches and you're making a difference every day, even if you feel like you're not, because I know mm. it, it can be discouraging at some point. Your job never ends, and it, it sometimes feels overwhelming. But I, I hope that this tool can uh, be something you put on your tool belt and uh, can be effective for you uh, as you minister to the couples in your care. But I just mostly want want to say thank you for what you're doing to minister to those couples out there. So, and thanks for having me on the program. I really appreciate it. Amen. Thank you, Les. God bless you. All right. Take care. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us on this week's episode. Every week as we are putting the episodes together, we're thinking of you, our pastors and ministry leaders, and striving to provide insightful and inspiring interviews as you seek to grow as a kingdom leader. So we hope you're finding value from the Church Leaders Podcast. And if so, we'd certainly appreciate you taking a few moments to head over to iTunes and leave us a review. Your positive reviews and ratings help other church leaders more easily find our podcasts so they too can benefit from these interviews. Again, we thank you in advance. And if you have any comments, any questions, suggestions, or ideas for guests, I would love to hear from you. You can send me an email to podcast at churchleaders.com or you can connect with me on Twitter. Finally, you can find this podcast as well as other great faith-based podcasts on the Faith Play app. It's available for both Apple and Android, and so we encourage you to check that out as well. So until next time, this is Jason Day encouraging you to love well and lead well. You've been listening to the Church Leaders Podcast. For articles, videos, and free resources that will help you lead better every day, visit our website at churchleaders.com. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.